We return to the adventures of Empressa Brandamina, the Holy of the Signs of the First Dawn Empire. Glorious, only surviving Catholic Empire. We're not including the HRE, because let's be honest, not really much of them left anymore. Yesterday, we sort of got into a little bit of mess. Obviously, dished out all of this land, rebuilt our empire up massively. That was obviously quite nice. Um, went for Ares, because there was a crusade against Ares, at which point the Pope pulled out and went for France instead, which we then promptly lost. Now we have to deal with not only this war that we got into to try and make the Holy War fire, the Crusade fire. 40,000 very, very angry Hellenic Olympians after us. We also have the entirety of the Empire of, of Alba trying to take back some of those core provinces we stole in the UK there. Those guys also have 51,000 men. Right now we're fighting two separate gods, uh, or two separate god descendants. Obviously the, the, the Celtic pantheon has sort of dried up a little bit there. But they are still good, don't get me wrong, 17, 18, 12 on a, on a ruler of an empire is obviously pretty decent. It's not looking good. It's seriously not looking good. What's that? 51,000 men from you guys. And what's that? 90,000 men, I believe, overall. Spread across two wars with gods leading them. We have 93,000 men. And we have a lot of other shit to deal with as well. Um, mainly, of course, the Pope constantly being just completely screwed up. We won't worry about that right now. Um, where do we even so much as begin? Now, I think yesterday my, my battle plan was very much let's finish off the war with Ares. Let's make sure that this Holy War for Barcelona goes through. Siege down everything we can over here. Try and get his air. His air's capital is in Valencia, so we can either try and siege him from there and, and, and grab him out. Or we can grab him from where he is currently in Constantinople. Ideally, we should go for Constantinople first, because there's a chance he'll flee back to obviously his capital in Valencia, at which point we could drag him out again. So I think we were bringing all the boats to the capital, right? That was it. Okay, so we can send an army over to the Byzantine Empire. The China China have won their war against this guy. Now, we couldn't do anything with China, could we? Because they had a peace deal with uh, us. Fine. Russia. Kemet. Asgard. Um, wait, could we not send China? Why was it we couldn't send China against them again? Um, we just can't for whatever reason. You know what? Now might be a really, really great time to send China after just Alba. T take some of the heat off. Because even if China do absolutely nothing, more to the point, they'll still kill some of their troops and they will be the world's biggest distraction. I'm going to do it. I'm absolutely going to do it. The Protector General of the Magnificent Emperor addresses a letter, the Honoured Empressor of the Emperor of the Signs of the First One. Heaven's blessings upon me. The Heavenly Bor... How do I say that? Borjijin Temur, Emperor de Zong of the Yuan Empire, agrees with your wise judgment. Thank you. Okay, so in a second, we will get an event fire saying that the China have declared war on Alba. This is what we had those points in the bank for. Now, we have, we have to do something to really get those points back because that was our safety net that we've now completely gotten rid of. Good luck, China. You're going to need it. Meanwhile, we'll try and fight off Ares. Hopefully, China can even do a little bit of damage. There we go. Just as planned. Good luck. Normally, you can obviously offer if we weren't already in a war with, with Alba there to, to join China against war with them. But, of course, we're already, we're already dragged into that. So, there's not a lot we can do there. Okay. Constantinople then. Let's get to work on that. So why don't we actually... I should have already dropped our troops, set some rally points instead. Otherwise, this is going to be a real pain in the ass. Set a rally point there. Set a rally point in the capital. Let's set a rally point just up in Tunis as well. So those are the sort of three areas we want to go for here. We're going for Japan, apparently, as one of those. Right, let's get to work, squad, and see what damage we can really, really do here. Leave those guys. That's, of course, the war goal. So we'll just leave those guys up there to, to try and grab whatever the hell they can. Who's leading the troops? Baguette. Okay. Understandable. He is obviously incredibly powerful. Let's make sure everybody's on the center under Baguette. Um, oh my god, I thought that was not doing anything, but the army is just so massive. It takes ages to move. Look at that. 18 different units of troops there. That's insane. Good god. This guy should be able to annihilate anybody. Brandamina, I'm going to take you off of that one, and we're going to put you on the main attack force here. So wait for that to deal with that. Oh god, I don't want to pop up for every bloody minor thing you're doing. Thank you very much. Let's get everybody over to this main island. Let's launch this attack force. We are going to be on the back burner for a little bit. We're going to be on the defensive. We can't constantly keep up this, this offensive assault because we've just got too many enemies. We've got too many enemies coming in at once. The second we declare war on, say, you know, well, we've seen it now. The second we declare war on Asgard, for example, you know, that there's nothing to stop Russia going for us. And, and obviously, same applies to all of the others there. So we have to be very, very careful. It really is just a pushing match at this point. It's, it's sort of like one of them Dota mobbers all them kids play. Right, get him into the center. Stalwart? No. Brandamina. Everybody under Brandamina, and then we'll put some sub-commanders on there for what it's worth. Uh, Stalwart, we'll get Gleb, we'll get, um, basically all we can do here, right, there we go. Okay, that's not much of an army, I will admit, but obviously we'll go up to Provence, pick the troops up, and then we'll go up to Tunis, pick whatever troops we can still fit on the boats at that stage. See what damage we can do in Constantinople. I have high feelings for this war. I feel like once we've got this war out of the way, the other war should be fairly straightforward to also deal with, and that's, this one really shouldn't threaten us too much. 48,000 men, happy to take that. Anyone else we got left behind, they can be just a, a sort of temporary home defense force. Ah, nice, thank you. Grandmaster Gwillem has decided to join us there. What is that? The Order of the... Uh, it's a nice Templar, right? Welcome, my friend. Join me. The House of Normandy. Is that actually the House of, of Normandy? It absolutely is. Look at that. Inter there he is, William. Cool. 
All right, um, we're gonna, like I said, swing straight for the capital, try and get uh, uh, Ares' son. Oh god, minus 86 percent. Oh, we're taking war score. Shit. Um, you know what? This actually might not be the best plan I've come up with. We might have to flip tactics here. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. We're instead gonna send these guys up to the UK. Sorry, change of plan. Just, uh, just sort of, you know, mostly all the way through the wall there. Right, send those guys back up. These guys can grab us a, a decent amount of war score. Even if we can get ticking war score with Asgard, they might. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> getting all of them confused now. Even if we get ticking war score with Olympus, they might not be able to dispatch a force enough, big enough to try and stop this, this, this siege going on. But gets on the center. We're still taking attrition. Fuck me, that's fairly impressive. That is fairly impressive. Let's take down a fall. That's only 4.8 gold. It'll save us a fortune in retinues. How, is it going to even stop much of it? Oh, what is this? One of the advantages of having an apprentice is they can perform st small tasks we don't have time to do. Oh, of course. We actually became, of course, last episode a summoner, which allows us to literally summon armies of angels if and when we need it. It's just like a non-reinforcing uh, event spawn troop. These guys... Uh, so, so we've actually made Stawar our... our Apprentice, kind of like the Hermetic Society, if you want to look at it like that. We can try and teach him as well. Set service value to zero, so he, he obviously gains points depending on how well he does here. Sure, we go with piety. I'm think, I think we've got some piety to spare, huh? We lost... Ah, oh, shit, what? We lost Humble, just randomly. Now, we do have a mod that should, in theory, stop these garbage events firing. It's because it's uh, there's a cap on the amount of traits you can have. Interesting, I guess it's just not compatible. Well, that sucks, because now we're going to lose Archangel. So if you wanted to see a goddamn fight, you're about to see a goddamn fight, because we are about to be nerfed into the ground. This sucks. Okay. Um, let's get everybody up to the coast. Where are my boats looking like right now? Because we are at minus 91%. Please, sorry. There we go. All right. We've lost our angelic trait, and we are instead being downgraded back to angelic form instead. Though you remain stalwart in your faith and steadfast in your reverence, your powers have begun to recede due to your setbacks. Nothing, nothing I can do about that. All we've got to do is stay part of the Benedictine Order and just really hope. Um, you know what? I, I really don't care that much. We could leave the Benedictine Order and rejoin it. Uh, that would, of course, reset our missions. In fact, I might also definitely do that right now. Um, why do we take a look at the coach map? Because I know people are very interested in that. Oh, it's a fucking mess. Who'd have thought it? Oh, wow. So this is Irish. Uh, this coach here is Irish, taking part of uh, most of Iberia there, most of Northern Africa, going even south down there into, uh, into Western Africa. Good God. We've got... This is just a mess. It's an absolute mess. Hellenic is, is spread all the way across into Iberia as well, all the way across northern Italy. We've got Norse in Rome. What is... And this is Demon as well? We've got Demons in southern Italy. That's weird. All right. Um, that's probably from Lucifer, I guess. Oh, we gained Ambitious, though. Okay, maybe not such a massive nerf. Thanks, thanks, CK2. I appreciate you at least trying to balance it out a little bit. How are we looking? Oh, we've got 11,000 men in our capital, too. I can't fight this many wars on this many fronts. I am but one man. I am but one simple brain man. This is not, this is not good. Right, count siege these, kill their troops. That will give us at least some war score. Won't be incredible, but it'll give us something, huh? Make sure everybody's on the center, because she needs all the bloody help she can get at this point. Good lord. And having her on the center leading all these troops is probably the safest bet right now. There we go. Just churn them all in. 56 and 93. Fucking hell, we have to do so much damage. Holy shit. Okay. Um, quickly counter siege as much as possible. 84%. Right, let's desperately call this one back. I'm even kind of tempted to split this army. Um... Why can't we split this army? Oh, because I move a lot. Alright, there we go. Split those guys. Let's get Stalwar on the center of whatever army we are not personally leading. Get all the troops under the center. It's just the safest way to play right now, especially when we're dealing with like 30 or so martial commanders. Are they seriously attacking into that? Fine. Let them come. You're going to get wiped out, and that's going to give us a hefty amount of war score. That's going to give us a huge amount of war score if they're going to keep going with this. They've kept all their troops sort of on the UK, which is obviously fantastic news for us. Um, how are we looking? Are we going to win that? Yeah, we are. We've got it. We've absolutely got it. Oh, it's... Okay, we're fine. Oh, man. 66% on one, minus 65% on the other. The pressure is unbelievable that these gods managed to keep on. Credit to them. Credit to the CK2 AI for actually being decently intelligent about this. All right. Uh, let's go for the capital next, then. Let's see if we can't do some damage here, because that will obviously give us a decent amount of, uh, decent amount of war score, too. What happens if we win this? Let's look at the rewards. Let's think on the plus side here. 6,000 gold. It's not... Honestly, it's really kind of unimpressive given that some of the absolute bounties we've got previously. But that's not too bad either, huh? 70% against Ares. To say that Olympus were easily the most powerful faction. Now, is that them in... Yeah, that's them in our capital. So, I'm going to leave those troops up there. Quite simply because they can rip through the UK and get us a whole bunch of war score. Seeing as, obviously, this is their home territory. Um, we, then, are going to send these troops down to... Or the boats down to here. Pick these troops up, probably moving back to the 
Matt to the capital before they start sieging it down. If they manage to do that, we, we might be slowed in our war against Ares. Obviously, I wanted to focus on that one first, but not losing this war is should come a higher priority than uh, making sure we're decisively defeating Olympus. You know what? In hindsight, if we rapidly assault all this stuff down without changing all the out on the center, we might be able to stop this war before it gets out of hand. I mean, we control most of the war goal already, and we've killed a lot of their troops. Obviously, not too many, because they've still got bloody 14,000 kicking around in our capital. Um... Yeah, this war was only a distraction war anyway, so I'm not valuing it particularly high. Obviously, if we, we do want to win it, because it's it's a holy war at the end of the day. It would give us a, a decent amount of land on Iberia. We're going to start kicking them out of that, so that'd be, that'd be kind of nice. Um, can we finish this war up before they... Because we haven't had a major battle yet, have we? Uh, we did. Oh, shit. Battle of Avicia. Sorry, this happened yesterday, so I've got to refresh my memory on that. Um, we lost 10,000 troops. They lost 26,000 troops. It, saying that we went in with that many troops, you can sort of see why the gods, I'm fearing them so much. Um... Yeah, that's not ideal. Fucking hell. We need to be somewhat careful about that. Especially if they got, like, three gods leading their armies. I don't think the AI is smart enough to be able to do that. But if they did have that, we would be super, super screwed. They landed 34,000. They're assaulting down. Oh, god damn it. You see that? But down to 83%. Fine, let's assault this one down. And we know that with this, chances are we can just go to our capital, counter siege, and be good. This is a risky strategy, but I feel like I don't have a choice. Am I just going to naval land it and fucking pray? Ares is leading troops. Oh, no. Okay, this could be a real concern. They are taking attrition, though. So are we, though. Oh, my God. Good Lord. Um, Ying might gain a pleasant trait. Ying, my grandson, I don't even know who you are, wants to surrender under these terms. What? Just he started clawing about war score? Fine. I'm not complaining. Has he been just, has he in a different war now? Um, ah, there you go. Oh, he, but he's actually beating Perun in a flower war. Weird. So that's probably why he lost that one so much, is a lot of his troops were diverted over to Demon Russia. 327,000 gold. Why are they not buying mercenaries? They could buy every mercenary on planet Earth for that and still have enough change to wipe their ass with. I don't know what the hell they're playing at, but hey, I will take that. Now we focus on dealing with the Celts. Easier said than done because, of course, um, they do have a ridiculous amount of men compared to Olympus here. All right. Um, why are we not sieging that one, though? <laughs> that's clearly... Oh, that's ours. Right, that's why we're not sieging that. It's actually our territory. Ooh. All right, let's stop these troops. Let's go and counter siege all of these as well, then. Start getting to ourselves into position where we can get ticking war score rather than the enemy obviously getting the opposite on us. These couple of sieges should be all that it takes, ideally. And then, of course, you know, we've got the capital down there. We've dealt some damage to their armies in just var various conflicts. Hand the culprits. We do not allow our men to rape and pillage. We are good Catholic men, thank you. Right, let's start taking out this glorious land over here down in Kent... Ken, I guess, is a holy site, so it might count for war, war score. I actually don't know too much about how holy sites add to war score, but you kind of assume that, uh, I mean, what is it, Canterbury? Yeah, Council Catholic Holy Site. You kind of assume that, that would be more valuable to us, or, or more valuable for them to siege from us. There we go. Okay, that should give us something. Have they just seriously taken that back in, like, the blink of a fucking eye? I swear I was gone for a second. Maybe I, I didn't completely count siege. It doesn't really matter either way. Right, take Gloucester. Jewel of the UK, as we commonly refer to it as. Let's go down to Dorset. Make sure we've got that one back as well, just so, again, they're not getting that fucking tick in war score. Meanwhile, let's reorganize our armies a little bit. Um, home defense force is nice. Would I prefer... Oh, actually, yeah, no, we definitely need a home defense force. Let's just drop these boats. Leave these guys here. Drop the boats. These guys definitely under our change a little bit. Are capable, are more than capable of doing this. These guys are just sieging. So, honestly, it doesn't really matter who we have on the center too much. All right, 15% war score. This is good. This is a nice turnaround to say that we got down to, what, minus 89% there for a second. This is looking up. This is looking up, especially if they're just going to throw their troops into the freaking meat grinder like that. Why did they do that? I've never understand that the... The, 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 the ideas behind the the AI at some time. They're also having a little bit of civil war there as well, by the looks of it. Um, why? Oh, is China acting as a nice distraction? 12% in favor of Archdruid. So they have had some conflicts then. That's good to know that China is at least acting as a distraction. That's, that's the whole point of brought them in. Look, oh they've only got 17,000 troops left. We might have this. I think we pretty much got it in the bag at this stage, huh? 32% war score. Look at this. And honestly, this is the key time where the AI need to stop us. If they can't stop us at this stage, we are quickly going to start snowballing. Granted, we don't have any more OP Castabella. We don't have any more invasions or anything like that. So, we can only establish foreign kingdoms who are suzerains to us, which means we would need to come in and protect multiple people. Obviously, the more we do that, the more people we have to protect, then we're going to stretch our armies. I really should dish out all this time we got in the Holy War before I uh, continue here. Otherwise, it's going to affect, you know, every reinforcement and that type of thing. Um, who would like Barcelona? Because I sure as fuck don't want it. Let's take a look who we got in our call then. Search round. Let's search all. Reset. My religion. My culture is kind of irrelevant. Let's sort by Marshall. Um, Sekhmet has had an interesting fucking life. I'm seeing so much weird shit here. First things first. Uh, clearly, 
Uh, the the uh, map, of course, a cat-headed god of, of uh, son of Ra. Cat-headed daughter of Ra. Uh, I believe it's a lion in Egyptian mythology. Obviously, there's no lions in ZK2, but there is apparently a cat-wielding spear. No, a spear-wielding cat. I know what I said. God, of course. Lion of Minit, which means they fought in a holy war for the gods of Egypt. There's also a shield maiden, which I believe means that she is some at some point served in a Norse pantheon. Wait, was she not married to... Were you not married to Odin or something like that? Something absurd? I have, I have no clue what's happening here. Um, anyway, weird shit's going on. More to the point. Uh, also a monster hunter, so they've flipped over to Catholicism at some stage and decided to kick some ass there. Very strange. And there's their kitten. Oh, that's horrendous. Kemetic demigod. Yeah, no, we're not interested in that too much. Who do I want to give this land to? Sorry, that was a nice little distraction. Huh? We can see, see a little bit of anime kicking around. Um, we've got some more angels to land. Of course, the more angels we land, the more angels that will be that will appear. Each angel can have a maximum of four angels in their court. This might get super OP if we start landing too many angels, though. Here you go, my friend. Uh, can't. Apparently, he's fucking miles away. Where are you? Miles away. Why have all our angels left our court? More to the point, who the hell are you? A seer? Catholic? No. Thor's daughter became... Ca this would be a hell of a blow to the enemy. Can I invite you to court? Um, invite to court. Opinion of uh, wants to stay with my lover. Uh, yeah, it'd be too difficult to do so. We could buy a favor. Yeah, we actually could just buy a favor for to go and invite her over. Let's fucking do it. Let's absolutely do it. I'm going to land Thor's daughter as the ultimate big dick play against against the ace here. Invite to court. Bring her on board. Hopefully she can hold landed titles. I have no idea about the... Uh, oh, she can't. What? Grant Lannan title, because she's a woman. Well, that's backwards. Can we change the laws, or is it because we're a merchant republic? Uh, merchant republic. A, um, status of women. Yeah, we'd have to increase the, uh, we'd have to increase the realm here. We, there's no reason we couldn't do it. Oh, because the Pope's against it. Don't know why I'm too surprised on that when I say that very incredulously. Okay, who else we got? Um, I'm looking for a nice, strong man. This court chaplain, for example. Angel court chaplain. Perfect. Fight to court by favor. Not possible, because, of course, he's a court here. What about you? Sorry. Telug the Orc, who's also a demon. Nah. Nah, you're okay. God damn it. Okay, give me a minute. I'll, I'm going to have to dig through this list of people to try and find someone at least somewhat viable. Gonna lie. I'm not, not going to lie. I have no idea how I've done that. We've now got a tribal high chief uh, Polish angel of Barcelona. Have I done that? No clue. Literally couldn't even begin to, uh, begin to think about how that's happened. Doesn't matter either way. Right, okay. 53% war score is obviously very, very nice. Now, we've got to keep the pressure on as much as possible. Just keep counter sieging. They are in a big old civil war or something, right? What's going on with this? Why are there so many... The, the vassals just having a lot of infighting. I mean, looking at them mostly, though, I'm just clicking around here randomly, to be honest. Um, yeah, a little bit of vassal infighting there. Irish war for someone's claim on Essex. This is good. Some of their biggest kingdoms fight one another. Some of their bigger ducal level titles fight one another. Absolutely fantastic news for us. I think just never stop assaulting. Don't give them a chance to start building their force up back together. Don't give them a chance for their own civil wars to end so they get to access more troops. Never stop assaulting. This this actually might work in our favor. What do we see? Oh my god, we're up to 86%. I didn't even bloody notice. Just too focused. I'm like zoned in on just that assault button the second it lights up. 89%. Good shit. 96%. Good shit. 100%. Thank you. I will take your 5,000 or whatever it is gold that you owe me right now. Boom. Great Holy War fails. I'm, I'm an earth, it seems. Does not favor the pagan faithful. After a string of defeats and setbacks, Arch Druid Cariel has called off the Great Holy War for Susanna against Empress Branamira and the Signs of the First Dawn. Holy shit, wow. We've done it again. Now that means we are currently at truce with both Asgard and these guys. Well, obviously offensively against these guys, defensively against uh against Olympus. I keep calling them fucking Asgard. So all the, all these pagans are the same to me. Am I right? Can I get a Deus Vault in chat? Let's drop some of our fleets to make sure we're not spending too much money here. Kind of give it up on the oh well, there's a mod I want to point out as well on the workshop just popped up today. I think it's called Caesar's uh, Wonders mod. Definitely, if you've got the same type of complaints with me, which judging by the conversation you guys do, go check that out. It looks very, very promising. I haven't added to this one yet because I'm worried it might break save games. Shouldn't, but just in case it does, obviously, I don't want to risk this at all. Right, Gleb, the Duke of Burgundy. Welcome aboard. And Archangel of Baguette, Duke of Paris. Wow. Oh, we got like an angelic council at this stage. It's a very powerful council, even if it's not angelic. Okay. What do we do next, then? First port of call, in my opinion, is to get that safety net that we used on China. In fact, how are China doing? I didn't even think to check up on that. I assume they're still at war with Alba. They might even rip them apart. And if China actually succeeded with this, my god, is that going to give us so many kingdoms that we could build on behalf of the Catholic people? How are we looking? They've only got 14,000 men left. Surely China can take them at this point, huh? 18% in favor of Archdruid. So I think if we leave this a couple of months, I genuinely, as weird as it sounds, think that China can absolutely grab it. They've got 60,000 men. All they've got to do is actually get their friggin' troops over to the other side of the earth. 
Unlike if you were to send China after, say, regular UK or even Scandinavia to some extent, they do generally struggle to get the troops over there. They do generally struggle to siege a bunch of land. The fact that they're in Northern Africa, the fact they're in Iberia too, and obviously this tiny little bit of, uh, of the HRE, we don't need to worry about that. I genuinely think they can absolutely nail it this time around. So I'm just going to leave that. That's our little experiment. We'll keep going on in the background. But to have that safety net there is obviously very, very good for us. Because we never know when, say, for example, our good friend Ra might decide that actually he's fucking sick of us. 64... Thousand men means that I am a little bit afraid right now of him. Um, especially seeing as, don't forget, we do share borders with this guy. No reason he wouldn't just swing for us. The Basilius, the or, or, or Olympia, I guess, has been weakened, but they are certainly incredibly powerful still. I mean, we haven't technically really taken anything from them besides a tiny bit of Barcelona. It's not going to put a dent in them realistically. Plus, with 331,000 gold, I just want to say buy mercenaries more, because they could easily have bailed themselves out of that war. How is Perun doing as well? Only 11,000 men. Now, they, they did just lose against Ares, didn't they? All right. Assessing the state of the world, then, I think our only threats realistically are Ra and Ares. Everyone else, I'm not concerned about. Honestly, I'm writing off Alba. I'm writing off Asgard. Fuck him. How are Asgard doing? 31,000 men. Oh, I'm still writing him off. Fuck him. So I want to go and get a quality 5 artifact from somewhere, because I assume we're off cooldown on our stealing. Send that shit over to China and get ourselves that safety net nicely back in. Obviously, they can't do it. I believe there's quite a long-term cooldown on it. But just having it available, just in case we could ever need it, is obviously going to be probably the most sensible play here. Um, rare artifact. Quality 5 rare artifact. What have we not stolen yet? That's the real question. Um... Let me have a quick think. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but weren't the quality four swords or the custom smith swords? They were worth 5,000 each, weren't they? So I think I might just swing for this guy. So so I was actually looking up the incredibly good Chinese horse. You can see that the red hair uh, sort of... Uh, what did you, you guys said? It was the, the horse of Lubu, I think. I've seen about a thousand comments saying... Uh, obviously disgusting the power like 50% movement speed is mind-blowing by itself to say that there's everything else there It's in oh, house of and two have somehow ended up with one of the best artifacts in the game there That's kind of cool. Let's go for dragon main because that sword is available to steal It just happened to be a coincidence. I was looking at this guy Let's grab that and hopefully it should work. This guy hasn't got incredible stats. See the shrewd might affect it somewhat who do you want to take with us? Shall we take Stalwart with us? Is he as good as Robert the Gentle, our ethereal angel friend? Um, you know what? I think it's time for him to prove himself. I feel like he's had it way too easy in life. You know, he's had this glorious education. He's had this glorious upbringing with... I mean, he is just a great guy. That's me saying he's got it too easy in life, but he is just incredible. Um, what are his descendants like? He's got an Angelic Blood son. Deus Volt Ming, Ming, Ming Zhong. We've got uh, Deus Volt Yuan Chao, who's also kind of okay. I really should be teaching these kids uh, virtues and things, because uh, this is the future of our house. We've got uh, Elizabeth Deus Volt, which was married to his legitimate wife, who I burn at the stake. Uh... Silly me. Whoops. Uh, you, know, you know how it is, Deus Vault and all that. Uh, <laughs> shit. What a, what a power play, huh? What an absolute power play. Let's make sure that... Does he Does he mind? He, just, he actually doesn't give a shit. Whoops. Well, long reign mutual pr trust. Yeah, that's fine. You know what? You burnt my wife. Not a big deal. Let's make sure that he's married off again. Because this guy is still the future of our dynasty. And he's still, uh, he's still got a few more years in him yet. Who do we want to go for? Who really is... Uh, she's tall. That's not really good enough, is it? Let's find someone good for him before I get distracted with this whole artifact thing, to be completely honest with you. Because I know I'll forget. And it's a, there's no excuse for it. Genius. Uh, let's go for women. Uh, let's say in prison, preferably not. Can I load up filter? Nope. Okay. Married? No. Ruler? No. Diplomat range? Preferably join court. Doesn't matter. All right. Um, sort by age, and we'll probably just end up inviting someone over anyway with a favor. She'll do. Uh, she's Hellenic. Not that it matters. I'm sure we can convince her if you catch my drift. G ask what happened to his ex-wife. I dare you. We'll, we'll convince her to, uh, to, to get on board here. So we could, if we can convince her with a little bit of gold and a little bit of favor, because we've got the ridiculous amount of diplomacy. She's apparently well up for it now. There we go. And she loves us, so chances are she'll just immediately convert as well. Let's get you over. She's perfect. She's actually like a really good wife for him right there. She's got love or anything? Nope. Oh, God, speaking of which. We arrived at Duke Anathasios of Afar's capital. As expected, it is heavily guarded. 86% um, chance of success. Convince some servants that actually, we're just here to assess the sword. We're just here to see your magical Chinese horse, and then we're right up onto the horizon, like wishful thinking. Right, welcome. Uh, you are going to be demanded religious conversion of, and that is big dick player right there. Turn turn away from your old dead gods. Rush them before they raise the alarm. 80% uh, chance of success. Yeah, absolutely go for that one. Thank you very much. She's converted, and now you are going to marry my son, whether you goddamn like it or not. There he is. Stalwart. Boom. Okay. Fantastic stuff. So that's that dealt with. Um, next generation. So let's teach our sort of great... What are these are grandkids, aren't they? So let's teach these kids all a bunch of various virtues. Every single one of them. Because I, I think... Don't they all have angel blood? Because they're all descendant from... Because he's fallen in love with this angel woman. This, uh, this old ancient uh, Han Chinese angel woman. So she... 
by because it's 50% inherit chance, pretty much all of them are guaranteed to get injured. It's not quite 100%. Some of the angry mob, and then let's go for 77% chance of success to grab the sword. Again, this is just, even if we failed, it wouldn't have been a big deal, because it's just a safety net for China. Here you go, my friend. The finest of gifts. That's right, a fucking ethereal angel. Maybe not, um... We'll send none of these people. I'll oh, send him. I don't. I don't mind. We'll send him as an ambassador or something. I'm sure I can uh, blag it. Right, Dragon Bane is yours. Five thousand. There we go. Boom. Nice one. Um, send him a gift. How much do you want? Six, for good God. Okay, never mind then. Kowtow before the Emperor. I think that's unnecessary. Would like to get a skull of bureaucrat and imperial. To be fair though, by the time that this Chinese invasion is probably going to be over, we'll probably have enough grace to be able to get that safety net if we need it. I'm going to get the skull of bureaucrat back. Maybe a master engineer. Those province modifiers are super OP, aren't they? Welcome. Right, okay. Problem solved. That's that put back in place. Next generation is worked nicely. Yeah, it feels like it's been a while since I've really paid attention to the dynasty. How's the house doing? 18 living members. That's some good shit. It's genuinely, obviously, it's all of our other kids were um, horribly burnt today. Was that Odin and Odin? Odin burnt my entire family tree there. What about our brother's children? Uh, he's still doing well. He does Duke Lop of Toulouse. I have been trying to obviously land them. And then we've also got Grandmaster Imeric the Preacher, another one of our members there, leader of the something something. God knows what that is. Oh, the Knights of San Diego. That's kind of cool as well. Right. House is dealt with. As far as I'm concerned, that's something I really should have done a, a very, very long time ago. And why not? Sorry, sorry, Angle. Let me just let this uh, five-year-old girl that I burned at the stake. She was a heretic. She was a heretic. My hands were tied. She was a heretic. Right, we're gonna let her burn at the stake. I think we can start working on the wonders again. We've got ten thousand. We, we've got we've got ten thousand big ones in the bank, so we can uh, we can kickstart these again. Extremely dense vaults. Extremely dense vault. Of course, needs to be built as soon as possible here. And apparently, is that our retinue? Oh my God, our retinue so big, they're dying. Maybe in the capital will get better, or maybe if we put someone to command them. What happens to Brother La Baguette? Where has he gone? Uh, ah, okay, that's fine. He's just overseeing the ramp. My god, I genuinely thought we lost him then. We should get an event. An event should pop up saying, like, oh, he's gone back to the kingdom of heaven or whatever when they go, which is why I was kind of concerned there. Oh god, no, this is really screwed. Um, we're gonna have to split our retinue in half, because we've actually got too big a retinue. Not really that much of a concern, is it? Right, there we go. Let's make sure he's not leaving armies just in case there is any invisible. I know a lot of mods like to add an invisible sort of, um, leading troops, you know, minus 50% fertility or whatever. So we'll just make sure that you are, uh, can I just forbid for leading troops or anything to do that? Oh, I have to actually relieve commander, don't I? There we go. Uh, burn the apostate. Who's this one I'm burning this time? She seems pretty apostate. He branded apostate, suspected monster. Fuck it. I'm, that's enough. That's all I need. A little bit of convincing there. Oh, not now. I mean, oh, lordy be, what could this... A great disturbance. A great weakness washes over you and you drop to your knees as if simultaneously a thousand mouths cry out in pain, as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. I fear something terrible has happened, you say to your angelic council, all of whom look visibly disturbed as well. All but one of them. That's when you look across the table to your oldest and dearest chancellor. Pope Honorius? Grandfather? His head cranes slowly, like grinding machinery. His eyes meet your own, and his jaw falls open. Oof. Long believed to be defeated by the arrogant and distracted Catholic forces, Lucifer, the fallen angel, has returned, manifesting within the physical entity of the current Pope and Archangel Extremely Deus Vault. Angels caught within the influence of the fallen Pope will immediately be captivated and transformed by the forces of darkness. Their first order was to swarm Rome with their unprecedented force and establish a new formalized Luciferian church. Ah... Good. The angelic civil wars have begun. A demonic kingdom is founded in Rome. Characters with angel blood and demon culture will convert to fallen angels. Ooh. Who do we know who fits that bill, huh? Oh. Saint Honorius. Saint Honorius. Extremely deus vault the true steel. Our, our first man and most glorious man of all. How far you have fallen. How far he has fallen. Saint Honorius, the vessel of Lucifer. Fallen angel, obviously. Lucifer's vessel. We got a bunch of bonuses from that. Shit in hell. Um, there he is. At the end. This is it. It was always, it was always to be expected, wasn't it? There could be only one. I mean, of course, you got to remember. If we go back, but, but how long ago? We didn't ever deal with the Lucifer. Lucifer just literally disappeared. He just disappeared. By this time, waiting in the shadows. And now we've prayed the po we, were, we were so distracted with greed, with war, with fighting off the pagans. We didn't think about the worst enemy at all. Satan himself. We didn't even consider it. And now he's here, right on our shores, right within our blood. That's so sad. That's so sad.